Hi class, welcome to Math is Fundamental. Today we're going to be talking about areas of trapezoids, rhombuses, and kites. So let's start with our first formula. We have area of a trapezoid. So here's a picture of a trapezoid. In a trapezoid we have two sides that are parallel and we call those bases. So we can make this equal to uh, base 1 and this one equal to base 2. So they're usually going to be, well actually they're always going to be different lengths, base 1 and base 2. And then remember just like in our last video we did, Every time we find an area and we use bases and heights, those heights have to be perpendicular to our bases. So here I have a height that's perpendicular to actually both bases because the bases are parallel. So my formula here is going to be 1 half base 1 plus base 2 times the height. And that might be a little difficult to remember, so I'm going to help you visualize that here with this diagram. So if we look at this diagram, and I look at the whole entire figure, I have a parallelogram. And we learned in our last, um, in our last video that area of a parallelogram is just base times height. So if I look here, and here's my height, okay? So area of my parallelogram, in this case, I would have my length of my whole base times the height. But if you see, our bases are actually broken into two parts. I have base 2 and then I have base 1 because we're really going to break it into trapezoids. So if I take my area or my length of my base, which would be B1 plus B2 for my parallelogram, and multiply it by the height, I would get the area of the entire parallelogram. Now, if I want just the area of one of these trapezoids, we can think about this trapezoid as half of the parallelogram. If you look, it's actually this trapezoid just flipped upside down and stuck together. So the trapezoid is half of, trapezoid is half of the area of the parallelogram, which we just found was base one plus base two times the height. So that's just another way to kind of think about your formulas. All right, let's see an example here. So I have a picture of the state of Nevada, and we need to find the approximate area giving our dimensions. So we have two bases. Here's my B1, my B2, and then my height is the piece that goes perpendicular between the two bases. So my area would be 1 half of 205 plus 511, and then times our height, which is 309. And using our calculators and approximating that area, we should get approximately 110,622. And our units are miles. And area always has square units. So we should have square miles there. All right. Second problem here. We're going to find the area of this trapezoid. But if you notice, we have our base 1 and our base 2, but they don't give us the length of the height. But they give us an angle of 60 degrees. And if you remember back a few uh, lessons ago, actually a good number of lessons ago, we talked about special right triangles. And our 30, 60, 90 special right triangle has a way for us to find the lengths of, of pieces of the sides, even if we just know one side. So if we look at this diagram, I have 5 on the top, which means this section is 5, and this section of my right triangle is going to be 2. So now, if I have this special right triangle with 60 degrees and a side length of 2, I know using my pattern that this side, the slanted hypotenuse of the triangle, is going to be a 4. It's always double the shortest side. And then our other leg, which happens to be our height here, is going to be 2 times the square root of 3. And if you don't remember how to do that, you can always go back and watch my video on special right triangles. All right, so now we have our bases and our height. So my area of this trapezoid is going to be 1 half 7 plus 5 times 2 root 3. So I have 1 half of 12 times 2 root 3 which is 6 times 2 root 3, 
which is 12 root 3. And we always, always put our units, which in this case are meters and its area, so we square our meters. All right, so there is our area of our trapezoid. Moving on to the rhombus. So just a little review on properties of a rhombus. We know that the diagonals of a rhombus are always perpendicular to each other. We also know that the diagonals bisect each other. So if we look at this picture of a rhombus and we have these diagonals bisect each other and these diagonals bisect each other and they're perpendicular, we end up with four congruent triangles. So let's look at this and see if we can figure out how to find the area without even knowing the formula. So if I know that one of my diagonals is four and it's been bisected, then I know that this part's two and this part is also two. And I can take my other diagonal, which is six, bisect it, and that's gonna be three and three here. Now, my area of one of the triangles is one half base times height, which is gonna be two times three in this case because they're perpendicular to each other. And that's going to be three. And I don't have any units here, so I'm just gonna put units squared. All right, so now my area of the rhombus, if we look at this, is going to be four of those exact same congruent triangles. So if I take four times the area of each triangle, which was three, I get 12 units squared. Now, that was kind of a long way around it, using our area of a triangle. To get the area of a rhombus diagram, we actually use the or formula. We, all, we use the diagonals. So if we look at these two diagonals, we have four times six, if I, or four and six. If I take and multiply them together, I get 24, which just happens to be double the area of the rhombus. So my area of a rhombus, if I want to use my diagonals, D1, and D2, D2, it doesn't matter which one is which, they're just both diagonals. I can take one half of the product D1 times D2. So nice short little formula if we're given the diagonals of our rhombus. Okay, now let's look at our kite. So before we do a couple examples, we're just gonna look at both of them. So let's draw the longer diagonal of the kite all the way across. And if we know our properties of a kite, I know that those two sides are congruent and these two consecutive sides are congruent. And of course, this would be congruent to itself. So we end up with two congruent triangles here. So if I wanted to find the area of one triangle, I could have my base here, which happens to be a diagonal. So I'm gonna call this D1 for diagonal. And then let's just label this with H for height. So my area of one of my triangles would be one half diagonal one times the height. But if we think about the height that I just drew, if I extend that and we know that the diagonals are bisected, then this is actually our other diagonal. So where H equals half of D2 or D2 equals two times the height. So if we wanna find the area of the whole kite, I can take the area of one triangle and double it. So the area would equal two times one half times D1 times, and then instead of H, I'm going to use this, one half D2. So I'm gonna put it all in, um, in relation to the diagonals. So my height was half of my second diagonal. All right, now if we simplify this, I end up with two times one half cancels out, and then I have one half D1 times D2. So if you notice, this is the same formula <coughs> as D1, D2, as the rhombus. So they just happen to be the same. You know what, let's color code these. So. D1 is blue, D2 is red. There we go. All right, so let's just do one quick example. If I'm given this kite and I need to find the area, I'm going to find the length of my diagonal. So sometimes they're split up. You gotta add things together. So three plus three, that's gonna be six meters. And my other diagonal is going to be seven meters. So my area is gonna be one half, six times seven, which is 21. And our units are meters squared. 
All right, and that concludes our lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, math is fundamental.